Today we're going to add activity detection to our chat application. So when I'm typing in this window, we should see a message in this other window that says I am typing. So I'll type something here, just anything, and you can see it says this person is typing. So let me go ahead and say hello and press enter and now we have the hello message. Now when this person types reply, you should see that they are typing in this window. So I'll say, how are you? And that's what we want to accomplish today. Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today we will add activity detection to our chat application and I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I'll also provide a link for you to join my Discord server where you can discuss web development with other students and you can ask questions that I can answer and receive help from other viewers too. I look forward to seeing you there. Our starter code is the completed code from lesson three in this video series, and today's video is lesson four. There's a link to the code resources in the description. And the goal of today's lesson is to add activity detection to our chat application. Let's start today by going to the index.html inside of the public folder. And remember, we're using everything now inside of the server directory. So if you still have an app directory, I'm not using that. I have moved everything inside in that previous tutorial where we applied the express server. So now I am at the index.html inside the public directory of our server. Now inside of this file, we just need to add a space for the activity to be listed. So I'm going to go ahead and put a paragraph here and give it a class of activity. And then we can leave the paragraph empty for now because we'll put whatever the activity is inside of that. So let's just save that file and let's move on to the app.js file. Near the top of our app.js file, we need to add a couple of query selectors. So I'm going to define activity I'm going to set this equal to document.querySelector and select that activity paragraph that we set up. And it's the only one that has the activity class. So that's how I'll select it. Now, besides that, I need to select what we're already selecting here for this input, but I need it available for more of the application. So I'm just going to copy that, paste it above, and change this to MSG input with camel case so that is message input once again and since we've done that and we're already pulling socket here in our send messages function out of the lexical scope outside of the function essentially let's do the same thing with this input so we can delete this line and then we can just get that value from the lexical scope so i'm going to replace message input or well i'm going to replace input with message input so i'll select the first one then control d control d control d i've selected all four and then control v to paste those and now we've just replaced that with message input and we quickly refactor refactored that send message function now let's scroll down below everything that we currently have in the app.js file and let's add an event listener to that message input so i'm going to say msg input dot add event listener and i'm going to listen for the key press event that is going to be the activity that we want and then we have an anonymous function that will execute when we hear a key press and here we'll say socket dot emit and we will emit an activity event to the server and then what we're going to do here is send the socket dot id and then I'll say dot substring because once again, this is a long string and let's just send the first five characters to identify the user for now. As we move on in our chat application, we'll actually use names, but this is quick and easy as we focus on the activity here. So we're sending an activity event to the server and we're sending this ID along with it to say who is being active currently. So let's save this much and now move on to the index.js that has our server code. Let's scroll down in the code to where we make the connection to socket IO here on line 25. This is a good place to have a discussion about the different types of messages that we can send. So once we have the connection, we can do a lot inside. Currently, we're only listening for a message event and then we are responding if we have that. But let's do more today. So the first thing I'm going to do is emit a message only to the user that connected. So here I'm going to put a comment to say what this is doing. Upon connection, we will send a message to the user, so only to user. We do that with socket.emit. 
So this will only go to the user that connected. Notice down here we're using io.emit. This goes to everyone connected to the server. This is only going to go to the user that connected. Now, what am I going to emit? Well, this will be a message. We already have our front end application listening for that. Here, I'll just say, welcome to chat app. So we have a nice welcome message when a user connects. After that, we could let everybody else know that a user has connected to the server as well. Now to do that, let me once again put upon connection, and here we'll say to all others. So you know this goes to everyone else, but it doesn't go to the user that just connected. We'll do that with socket.broadcast.emit. So this is a good thing to remember. Socket.emit goes directly to the user and socket.broadcast emit goes to everyone else except the user. Now here we could send another message and let's just send the same message that we are logging in the console up here, user with the socket ID connected. And you know, I might wanna go ahead and limit that since we're sending that down. Let's go ahead and limit that to the substring with five characters only. So we'll put that inside of here instead of the full ID. There we go, I'll press Alt-Z to wrap that down. So this is what's going to get sent to anyone else that is connected when this person connects. So we've got two separate things we're sending upon connection. Notice both of these do not start with socket.on. Here in this example, we are listening for an event here. So I'll put listening for a message event. So these are three distinct things that are different here after we have made a connection to the socket IO server. Now, likewise, you must be connected in order to disconnect. So we're going to listen for a disconnection inside of this io.on connection. That might seem strange, but it makes sense when you think about it because you have to be connected first. So here I'm going to put when user disconnects, this would go to all others. So this will be similar, but it will be a listener. Let me scroll up just a little bit here and I'll put socket.on. And now we're listening for a disconnect event. So you know we're working with a listener when you see socket.on. And the first thing we say is what event are we listening for? Then after the disconnect, let's have our function. And inside of this, this will be very similar to what we had up here socket.broadcast.emit because we'll send this to everybody else, of course, except the person who just disconnected. They don't need to receive that anyway. So now we can say message user and provide the first five of that socket ID. And here we'll just say disconnected. So everyone else has sent a message when somebody disconnects. And we'll try that out as well. We'll try all of these out. Now let's send one other message to all others. And this is the one we were really working on. We will listen for activity, and I'll scroll again for some room, and then we'll say socket.on, so follow the same pattern. This is an activity event. Now we'll have a function. Now remember, we were sending the substring here, the socket.id.substring with the five characters to this with the event when it happens. So what we wanna pass in here is a param, and we'll just call it name because it represents a user name. And then inside of here, we will socket.broadcast.emit. So it goes to everyone else. We don't need to see on our own screen that we're typing. We know we're active, but everyone else will then get a message that we're typing. So here we'll send an activity event and we'll pass in that name value. So let's save these changes to the server and we'll check them out in just a second, but we're not quite finished yet. We need to go back to our front end app.js code here and listen for that activity event that comes back. Here we had an event listener for the key press that sends the activity event, but now we need a socket.on here in the front end to listen for the activity event. So underneath our message.addEventListener, I'm going to put another socket.on and I'm going to listen for activity here as well. And then we will receive a name that will be sent from the server with that activity event. And then inside of this, we could say activity. Remember that is what we selected above. That's that paragraph in the HTML. So we'll say activity.textContent and we'll set that equal to a template literal 
where we say name, and we'll have is typing, and we can put three dots after that. Now you could do anything here. You could probably even trigger a class that would have an animation, but we're doing something simple here, just saying name is typing, much like you see in text messages when somebody else is typing, or Facebook Messenger, or something similar to that. Now this message could just stay there forever after we set it like that, and that's not what we want. So the quick and easy thing to do here is to come up inside of the message, like after a message is sent, and then we have activity.textContent, and we'll set this equal to an empty string. Now there is still a problem here that we're going to address, but I wanna try it out this way first. So let's go ahead and open a terminal window now we're in the lesson four directory. Now remember, we still have a parent server folder. You could get rid of that, just move everything out of that because we're essentially just using one folder now for everything. But the server directory is currently the root server here. So that's what I'm still doing. And I kind of think it reminds everybody that we've moved everything to this Node.js server now using Express. So I'd like to keep that and I'm just going to CD into the server directory so I can then start the application in dev mode by typing npm run dev. This should start everything on port 3500, and then I'm going to pull up the chat windows in a couple of browser tabs. Okay, I've got the front end application open in two different browser windows here, and you can see I opened this one first. They both got a welcome to chat app, but because this one was open first, when this user joined, I got a message over here that's saying user tpwvj, whatever, connected. So that's cool. Let's go ahead and refresh, because if I refresh this one, it should disconnect and reconnect. Let's see what happens. Yep, so that user disconnected, and now, of course, it's a new socket ID, so it says a different user connected. Let me do the same thing over here, and we get that over there as well. So everything's working as expected there. Let's go ahead and send a message, say hey, and it says I'm typing, and then we got the message. That activity detector worked as expected also. Let me do the same thing here. I'll say hi, yep, it says I'm typing, and then it sent the message. That works as well. So it looks like we're getting every message we expect to get, but let's see if there's a problem. I start typing here, and now I never send the message and it just says I'm typing forever. That is never going away. Even if I'm not typing, we're leaving our friends hanging over there, expecting a big message, and we really didn't intend to send anything at all. So we need to fix that in the code. Okay, I'm back in VS Code, and I'm at the app.js for the front end app that's inside of the public directory. And what we need to do is essentially set a timer that gives up on our typing after a while. It says, no, they're not gonna send a message after all, let's go ahead and clear it out. So let's do that by setting up let activity timer right here above our listener for activity. And then inside of our listener for activity, after we set the text content, let's go beneath that. And I'm going to put a comment here and we can just say clear after, and let's start out with three seconds. That's long, but it lets us see what's going on. You may wanna change this to one second after you see how it works, but we're going to start with a clear timeout and we'll pass in that activity timer. So what that's going to do is, it's always going to reset the timer as long as we're active. We type something else, it detects the activity, it resets the timer. So underneath that, we need to go ahead and set the timer. So now we put activity timer, and set this equal to set timeout, and that has a function inside of it. And inside the function, we're going to have activity.textContent and just clear out that text content, set it empty. But here's where we actually put the time. So I'll put 3000 because that's milliseconds. So that's three seconds. So now after three seconds, we won't leave our buddies hanging. They'll know that, hey, they stopped typing. They decided not to send whatever it was they were typing. So let's save this and now go back to the browser and check it out. All right, I am back in the browser and we've got the two tabs open. You can see this one was open first when I refreshed the one over here. The other user disconnected and reconnected. Those messages might get annoying, but I wanted to show you how those worked. You could go ahead and remove those if you decide to in your application. Of course, we haven't pulled it all together yet, and we will. Let's just check out the typing messages. So look for the typing message over here on the right as I type on the left, and I'm just typing randomly. I'll go ahead and delete it. I decided not to send it. 
and then it disappears. And that's what we want. In case we send something or decide not to send something, actually, we just don't want to leave our friends hanging. So we can say, hey, says I'm typing, send the message, it's great, it disappears. But then if I decide I'm going to reply and then I say, no, nah, I don't have time right now, then it's not going to leave them hanging. Once again, we set that for three seconds. Maybe you want to set that to one second. Now, in the next tutorial, we're going to go into chat rooms and connecting to specific rooms with specific people talking about specific topics. So we'll get into a lot of detail there, all in the next one. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection. And a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.